So welcome to part six of uh, the Tamiya 172 uh, live build. No, I've got it for about another three hours or so to go. I'll check the time now. Um, I've got about another three hours to go um, till till the um, Google Plus, the other Google Plus um, live. Well, basically, it's a uh, yeah, like a two-hour build, um, which I'm actually quite excited about. Um, but yeah, because I'm, I'm nearly finished this thing this weekend. Oh, I'm going to finish it this weekend. There's just hardly anything left to do on this now. Just a few things to paint, a um, couple of bits in here. But I'll I'll just re-update everything what's happened since the last video. Uh, what happened the last one? Well, basically just um, paint the stripes. Get this out of the way. Now we're basically just painting the stripes um, on the ordnance here. So you would have seen me masking it all up. This is in part five. So you haven't seen part five, seen me do it. Um, it's about a three hour video. But yeah, go back, have a look. You'll see I've actually like masked all these up and painted it and explained why I painted, painted it the way I did. Uh, a couple of other things um, that, I'll, that I'll go through as well. Um, just get these. Over here as well. <coughs> I've painted a bit more of these and I've sem airbrushed it with that semi gloss um, mix that I've made up 50 50 of just um, gloss and matte varnish. I've uh, layers polyurethane and just, yeah, just 50 50 in a drop bottle and just sprayed it. And the actual the, the gloss itself, it's just right, it's not. It's not a dead matte, or it's not like a super shine on it. It's, well, it's a semi gloss, but yeah, it's um, it's perfect for what I want for this aircraft. So I've actually gone over off camera as well. Um, um, they're just test fitting. Just been doing test fitting for all this. You know, semi gloss the whole aircraft as well. So you can see that all the the matteness has actually gone away from it. Um, from the like from all the um. UMP dark dirt wash that I put on it previously, and I've just given it a fairly heavy coat, but it was a very diluted mix of that um, semi gloss varnish. So that's pretty much done now. Um, all the white inside's been tidied up, and all the wheels just been tested. I've still got to paint, paint the front here, do the silver in there. There's a couple of small pieces that I've got to. Also prime and paint, but I'll do all that with a paintbrush. Uh, won't take long at all. It's just like all the uh, all the supports and things for the landing gear, and it's just like yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, this sprue here is just a couple of bits for the um, mid-air refuel, but because I've already um, set them as a closed position on here, which I've got to touch them up with paint as well. Just got to paint that up. So they're going to go in the bits box. So. They can stay there. Um, to all the bombs, there's a few, there's a little bit more to, to work on the ordnance. Um, just going to go through some more pictures from my books a bit more and decide what I'm actually going to do. I think in these ones here, I've got to paint three stripes, but um, that's going to be the tricky bit because so, they're so small. So um, whether I try to. Um, uh, Um, yeah, so whether I hand I hand paint the stripes on here or I mask it up, that's a different story. Just because um, these are going to go on the outside and they, they're going to be very noticeable on the aircraft, so I may have to like yeah uh, mask it all up and do that. But I don't think I'll get time tonight to do it. Um, that'll probably be tomorrow, and then um, then I'll just yeah basically spray some more lac on the on those missiles and I'll mount them onto the side here, the side of the wing. So that's that. Uh, I've actually stripped back the um, canopy, all the paint on the canopy as well, off camera. Oops. I get that lens and lens and lens and some some paint or something. Um, yeah, so I've actually just put in a little, um, just had one of these little containers here. Just one of these, just a normal plastic container. 
and I half filled it with some isopropanol alcohol um, and then just basically stripped all the paint off using a cotton bud um, and also then, then I just got some of this 3M masking tape here I think it's this stuff here, which one was it? No, I think it's uh, the accent tape here, it's just like it's just a low tack um, painters tape and just cutting the thin strips on the cutting mat here and I basically applied it around the outside. I didn't have to go on the inside because it's I basically just filled that up with a bit of Marscol on the end of a Q-tip, just dipped it straight in the bottle and then dabbed on there's two coats of Marscol on there so when I do spray it um, it'll just yeah it'll just basically peel off um, so that'll get primed in that probably It'll be one of the last things I'll put on the aircraft, so I may even do that tomorrow. And I think everything that's going to be done tomorrow will be the last video, and I think it'll be all assembly in that tomorrow. Um, so landing gears, my wheels are just sort of stuck on there. Hello, thanks, um, Trice. I think I hope that's how you say it. Um, so, um, these actually you may have even gone oh, so back in there. Uh, <coughs> <coughs> Yeah, so um Yeah, so these wheels are just basically stuck on. I just want to see if they all fit and everything before I glue them all together. Um there's there's probably I may even detail these up just a little bit more. Um may add some kind of chipping on the bottom here. Um Bugs West, like you know, just debris flipped up off the runway. On the bottom of the landing gear strut, so that that'll take. That's hardly. Anything. That's just a bit of um, spongy on a bit of black, and some uh, metallics on there. So as well, I'm going to take these off. So I really don't want to break these at all. Yeah, so they're basically identical. These two. So um, I won't actually glue the wheels on just yet. I'll leave them off. Um, and same here. The wheels are just sort of pushed in. I just want to make sure everything fits before I glue it together and make sure it all lines up because if it doesn't and I glue it on and then um, I'll get myself into a lot of trouble. Um, here's the, the wheel. Um, I'm going to call it a, a guard because I obviously don't know what it is. And I'm going to be honest. <coughs> As the, I think, um, which way does it go? Um, it goes on the back there, I think. Just double check on the instructions. Um, just to make it a bit clearer. Okay, so she's going to sit. So she's going to sit there. That's the that's the guard on that I had in my hand. So once it does go on, she is going to sit on. Where do I put it? Um, she's going to sit like that. So she's going to sit backwards like that. Looks a bit weird, but I am going to, because it is on the tire, it's going to pick up a lot of junk off the runway and um, I might just sort of dirty that up a little bit, just in there. Put, 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 put a bit of a, I um, haven't really decided yet because I just thought about that just now. So it is going to need a wash in there to sort of dirty it up a bit more. Um, I'm looking through... I'm looking through this book again, and all this is going to be for the next stage for this next video, like this one that we're doing now. So these are all the things that I've picked up off camera. You know, I've just been doing a bit more reference and sort of working out what I'm actually going to do with this kit. Um, I have noticed. Um, where is it? I did see it um, here. 
So before I just had all this as painted white, but not realizing these were, um, uh, what, what would you call them? Are they, uh, and just have wings, there's one bombs, where are they? Complete free fall bombs. So there's some, some kind of free fall bomb. But if you can see on the picture here, I don't know whether the camera picks it up or not. I really hope the camera picks it up so you can see. I was a little focus a bit. But you can see the missile, this boy, this bad boy here before the, um, behind the red one. The actual fins themselves, um, it was very deceiving on the kit because um, it's so thick. But they're actually like a, a metal, um, it's like a, a foldable fin that sort of, and it's something like a brass coppery colour. So I've actually base coated that black um, and I'm going to paint that in metallic. Um, probably pick up one of the, um, uh, probably the my own institution while I was talking about it, otherwise I would have forget. Um, so I'm not using um, tinny tin from Vallejo Game Color, but it's it's going to need a good shake up because I haven't used this in ages. Um, so I'm ending up spraying this, doing the wheels. Um, I've also actually started just prior thought. That's why I started getting ahead of myself. That's why I thought I'd chuck the camera back on. Um, these are all the landing gear bay doors that we've got here for the SU-34. Uh, I've just got a couple of parts here. These ones, and I've probably only just um, washed these by about 15, 20 minutes ago. Um, so what I've done in the pallet here, um, it's probably just about dry, but just here, I've just got some uh, Citadel Bad-Ad Black, and I've just been using this Bad-Ad Black entirely for the bottom um, for the landing gear section, bay sections of the aircraft. So we've still got this to do, this one to do. Um, I have started, oh, I have finished that one, that's just been done. And so I bring it up closely. So it's really thinned out. And, um, any excess that was sitting on the top surface, I just cleaned up with a paintbrush and some water. Um, that's probably a bit thick there as well, so I'm going to have to clean it up just with a bit of airbrush cleaner or something. Um, and it's all been um, spray sprayed with uh, Pledge Future Shine that I've just put in the drop bowl, just straight in the airbrush, one decent coat on it because I don't want it too thick anyway. And I've just put a quick layer on the outside just to protect it from being scratched or yeah, just, just whatever, just to protect it. Um, so we'll keep going with that. So that's that's pretty much the the update of what's happening and what we'll, what's going to be happening in this video. So I guess um, enough talking about um, this thing and we'll get into it. Eh? So I'll put this away. So if I suddenly got to say, well, I've got in this video, it's, it's um. It's because, oops, hang on. Um, yep, and it's because that the other, which I've got to keep an eye on the time as well. Um, I'm going to see if I can adjust all these screens behind me so I can see what's going on. Um, blah, 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 blah. Alright, so if I suddenly go disappear, I've only got about um, two, probably just a bit over two hours to film this, just get as much as I can in two hours, and then basically we're going to jump over to, um, to I think it's it's either going to be, I think they're both doing it tonight, um, Paul Brentlin from Ice International Scar Modeler, and also Dutch Modeling Sebastian. Pretty sure, and I don't know what's actually happening just yet. Um, I haven't been over getting in contact with Paul because, as we all know, Paul's a pretty busy dude, um, and so is Sebastian. So, and I guess they're sort of organising everything, and yeah, like we all are. I've actually had to organise 
what I'm actually doing with the um, Spitfire. So I'll just quickly run into this. Um, for the next two and a half hours, you'll see us, or well, I'll be building this. I think it's the Farnsworth Neshi 43 or something like that. I'm not too sure what it is. Really nice aircraft, though. Also by a hobby boss, but um, I've had to find reference material for this um, just to make sure that the colours are all right. I actually had to make, had, had to make sure that I had all the colours, actually, so I wish I'd do. So that's pretty good that I do. So we're just going to get some. I'm going to top this. Um, Oops, two thick scales lying around everywhere. So just while we get this in shot, um, just got some Citadel um, Badab Black Wash. I don't have any of the Nolan all yet, so if you guys are familiar with the Citadel paints, and um, yeah, I just, just have, I've had this for a while. I don't really use it that often unless it's for miniature painting or doing sort of work like this. So I've just got a couple of drops there, and also just to dilute it a bit, thin it out. I've just got a um, same same drop of bottle. Um, just got uh, water in it, just plain old tap water. It's not distilled water or anything like that, like other people say to use or recommend. I might put two drops in there, why not? And also, there's also a bit of um, liquid text flow aid in here as well, just to help the um, the paint sort of flow a bit better around the recesses and doesn't. Um, sort of hold up and stick too much. Um, so we'll just give that a quick, quick mix. And I sort of tend to put my washes on the edge of the palette too, so I can just pick it up. And then any excess that you screed off just goes back in that pile. So just put this off just out of um, camera there, so we've got a bit more room. Um, so we can do this one. We're just going to pick up some paint, and I'm not. Um, I'm only doing the recess work. I'm not like I'm not completely saturation. It's not full saturation washing. I um, just want to pick out the recesses. Hopefully, it's not too close, and the camera is. Yeah, I'm definitely going to sort another camera, guys. So, yeah, I actually didn't buy this camera. Well, I didn't buy this webcam to to make these videos. Like, I ne never even thought of um, doing live builds via Google Plus at the time of buying this camera. So, I think it's just a new thing. And um, I mean, let me know what you guys think. If you want to see more of these, like, yeah, just. Put a comment in the comment box. Leave a comment on the YouTube channel on this video on the YouTube channel. Um, and if these are, because uh, I am getting a lot of positive feedback from some of my subscribers, but just want to make sure you know, the guys that are watching now, yeah, just let me know what you guys think. So I'm going to test this one. And I don't want it too thick either. If you make it too thick and then it starts piling up on top and it starts sitting, um, it makes it really hard to, um, well, not hard to clean off. But it just makes more work, unnecessary work. The thing I like about this bad out black too, when you put it on, it's not like if you, if you used, um, Black Indian ink or drawing ink, um, which is really, really concentrated. Like, for example, the Windsor Newton stuff. Um, I've got the Atelier, uh, which is an artist, uh, which is an artist brand of. It's a range of like they make everything. They make everything from retarders to mediums. Um, what else do they make? I've got. Yeah, they they do. They make acrylic paints. They make. Um, airbrush mediums, um, and they also make um, like drawing inks. But I've got this bottle. Um, it'll be. Ugh. Yeah, I've got the stuff. I've got the stuff here. It's just waterproof drawing ink, and it's like if you put on a piece of paper, it's it's black. It's very very concentrated pigment. Um, and you wouldn't be able to use like wash your models straight out, like 
straight out of the bottle. You'd um, have to dilute it a lot. Um, if you don't, it's, it'd be, you'd be basically drawing. If you use it straight out of the bottle, it'd be like using a Sharpie pen on your model. And that's just how strong the stuff is. And I've had that bottle, um, I'd say now, for about six years. And I'm not even a quarter of the way through it. And it only cost me $8. Um, so if you, if you thin it right out, um, even if you thin it right out, it'll be just black. Like it's a it's a very strong black ink, um, which makes a really good wash if you want um, a very uh, what do you call it? If you want the strength of the wash to be really strong, so you want it black, yeah, use that. But which I don't want to use that for this. Uh, if you thin the Citadel stuff out, you actually um, it's a dark grey. So on a on a white um, it's on a white surface, it's ideal because you know, you don't want black unless it's, it's a trap door and there's a big crack in between. So, so I'm just gonna clean it up. Um, so that that modelling putty that we used to bog up. Um, if you have been, um, for the guys who are watching, you have been following this series, um, the series, the modeling putty that I used, or the modeling paste, not modeling putty, the modeling paste I used to bog up the injection, um, inject the pin marks, and they work, it worked really, really well. Like they're not even, yeah, they're not even there anymore. So that's one, two, you have to clean that up. But I'll actually show you how to clean that up. Um, in a so I'm just sitting there just really quick. So let that dry. I'll, I'll clean it off in a minute because I'm still using this brush here for that. So this would just be a really quick one. It's not going to hurt if you sort of drown in the drip. Which I'm only doing around the outside here. If you sort of don't want that in there, you think that is too much, just take the excess off on the paper towel, like scrub it off, and then just dip the tip in there, and then basically just pick it up. Do the outside again. Clean some of this off. The water. And that way, uh, you're not going to get a sharp edge on it, but yeah, you can actually blend it. Oops. Come on, come on. I'm just trying to put this shot where it's comfortable for me, so just excuse the camera moving around. Yeah, so if you use the water, you just blend it out. So you're not really going to see it. It's just going to be subtle there. Um, and it's done. Okay, so this thing. All right, because this is a little bit bigger. I'm just going to be kind of liberal with this stuff. Like I'm not going to be. We're just going to clean it up in a second, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I've had a lot of, yeah, it's funny, eh? Like, some, a lot of people knock Citadel Games Workshop paint. Um, actually, like, it is a little bit expensive, but it depends on what country you live in. I'm not too sure what other what other countries pay for it, but it is fairly fairly exy over here in Australia, um, which is which is why I only buy certain colours that are really really sort of fine that um, 
that are really good that Citadel make. Or what I'm trying to say is there's some paints that Citadel make that uh, no other companies or like there's paints that like you know the layer doesn't make. You know, like their texture paints, um, their um, was it Typhus Corrosion? You know they've, they've got all, they've got a really nice blood color as well. I think it's like Blood for the Blood Gods or something. Um, it's a really nice thick blood colored paint, and then combined with the um, with the blood mix I actually made up. Um, that's another video that I've done. It's making um, a blood uh, a batch of like yeah realistic looking blood using um, Tamiya, the clear, the clear colours from Tamiya, and you mix it, combine those with the effects added with the um, blood for the blood guide, you can get some really nice effects with the Citadel stuff. So, yeah, just because yeah, it's associated with Games Workshop or Warhammer or whatever, yeah, but don't don't be turned off by that because they actually they do make some really nice paints. And they, you can airbrush with it as well, so. I don't think you can't airbrush the old paints. Um, what I'm doing now, I'm just getting some water, taking like sort of gently cleaning the brush off with um, water. And I'm sort of just trying to blend it out in the middle, sort of cleaning the middle, but still trying to keep the wash um, in the recesses. And also trying not to add too much water to my brush because what happens if you put too much water in the brush and starts mixing in with the um, bad uh, black that's in the recesses here, it starts to run away because it just starts becoming too thin. Um, it's already thinned out enough as it is on the palette. So, so now that we've done that one, we're just going to. And the water I'm using, it's not exactly like clean, it's just, you know. Yeah, so don't stress that it. it's not, it doesn't have to be like completely clean, clear water. All you're doing is just um, taking the, trying to take the excess wash away. Okay, so I'll need one more. So now that that's done, So I just got a message from Paul regarding the, um, the two-hour build. So if you want to tune in, it's going to be around about seven o'clock, seven thirty, somewhere between seven and eight o'clock. Um, but um, I'd say if you want to sort of watch it, I'd sort of yeah, sort of start tuning in um, around about seven o'clock. And that'll be, um, I think, Paul from ISM. Um, if you're not subscribed to Paul, it's he's got some funny videos. <laughs> he's got some really funny videos. A lot of them just Google Hangouts because all his other videos, well, his um, proper modeling videos are um, the ISM ones. So you won't actually find like actual modeling tutorials on Paul's channel. Um, you'll have to go to the ISM uh, YouTube channel for that. So that's that one there. And but it will be 18 plus as well, 18 plus tag. So uh, if you're not 18, or you can't access it, yeah. Sorry guys, you're gonna miss out. Um, only being that, yeah, it's some of the we don't actually speak um, cleanly. <laughs> if um, if you know what I mean. <coughs> oh, my throat's getting a little croaky, I don't know why. 
Um, God, that is just really annoying. Um, all the way to go to the right, then I'll release it in the message. First come, first serve. Uh, okay. Alright, so. So this is excess here now. This is this is where it's really hard because you can't see. Um, normally, this camera, if I'm just recording a, a normal video from a YouTube channel, it's actually quite clear. But I think it's just because of the way um, Google Plus and YouTube and all that sort of um, upload the videos and just the way I'm doing it, it's not really that clear. But you can see if we, well, hopefully, you can just make out that there's a bit of a chunky sort of mess here that I've got to try and get rid of. Um, and what I suggest, if you ever sort of run into this problem, um, even on your own models, you've you know you've made a mess and you've, you've forgotten to clean it up. Um, you know you, you just don't want to have to respray the whole thing and do it all again. Um, right now I've got to find it because I just moved everything. Um, Right, all I've got here is uh, Vallejo's airbrush cleaner, and I've just been yeah, half dosed it with water, so it's like a 50 50 mix of water, which is why it foams up a lot. So I'm just going to get a, a tray, just a lid. I don't need much. And using the same brush. Just give it a swirl, sort of clean, cleans this brush out a little bit. And screed some of the water off. I don't want this to be saturated with um with the airbrush uh, cleaner because what will happen it will just yeah it will start acting like a wash and run in the recesses and start taking um, the wash away. I might change this. What I've got here now is. Um, just as I, uh, eyeliner, makeup brushes, disposable ones, and I've used these. If you follow my channel regularly, um, I'll actually use these quite a fair bit. They're just disposable, but you can clean them out like paint brushes. But they just don't last, you know, for, forever and ever. They do eventually just get all frayed up, and you do go throw them out. So I'm just going to use this. This is more like a hard tip. It's going to act more like an eraser or rubber. So just really quickly, I'm just sort of doing the outside. Um, and it really sucks for you guys because you can't see what I'm doing, so I can't zoom in close enough for this um, cruddy camera. But what I'm doing is just taking taking the outside, like cleaning off the outside. Uh, if I can bring it in, we can get half an idea what I'm doing. Okay, so you can see up where my thumb is. That's, that's what I'm trying to get. So you can see down the bottom here where it's really dark. It's where I've actually sat, like when I've washed it, I've just sat it in the foam, like in the foam on the board, and the gravity is just, yeah, just taking all the way down. So now I'm going to try and clean it off, which is why I don't want a, a full saturated um, tip on this thing. And also I've got to be careful that I don't take eat through the um, the pledge, the layer of pledge um, future shine coat on this. So I've got to work uh, lightly, I guess you could say the word is, and sort of quickly. Um, and you've got to be right, it's kind of pretty neat. Um, so. Oops. Right. So that's pretty much cleaned up. I'll probably do a little bit more. Yes, I'm just trying to get as much done before this um this two hour build begins. And I may even stop a couple of times in this video. Um, 
just make a cup of tea or something like that because yeah, I'm going to try and stay awake. Has been asleep today as well, but during the weekends, um, yeah, like weekends is my modeling time, I would say, which is some weekend. I think last weekend, if you sort of Google Plus, it was like I was pretty much up to 24 hours building with the boys on and off, and then just had massive sleep on Sunday. So I had to go back to work Monday, so I just went to bed early. Um, so that's done, that's all cleaned up. That's still drying, it's clean. Alright, so give this little um, makeup brush a clean. You just clean, that, clean it as you would like an old paintbrush. Um, and it doesn't have to be 100%, which is it's just one of those brushes that you use for. You, know, you just bash up and it doesn't really matter. <coughs> oh, so that's all done. So pretty much all the um, the wash, all the wash um, work is done. So I'm just sticking them all back in the same board. So it frees up the. Um, well, I've got to do this one yet too. So so it frees up the um, table bench space. Then I've got an airbrush. The windscreen here, got airbrush that. So I don't need that here. And that little bleak behind me is everyone on Facebook. Um, I'm just going to reply back to Paul. Yeah, so that's just the OSM Facebook chat you hear going on in the background. Um, so I'm just going to quickly, 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 quickly. Oops, not that quick. I don't know how clear it is for the viewers out there, but what I'm seeing in front of me is just horrific. Um, It even says it's in high definition too, but I think it's lying. So I'm just going to give it a watch here. Do the whole thing. I'm just going to use my fingers to um, blend out anything that's. Alright. And I'm going to put a wash in there. Um, just trying to think what I'm going to use. Yeah, because I don't want it, that's just too white. Um, well, I've got a little pile of um, bad black in that thing in the tray. I might mix it with a bit of Agrax shade. I'm just going to give it a little shake. It doesn't really matter. You don't really shake. You need to shake your washes up. They're normally pretty good. But if I do anyway, it's just a bad habit, I guess. Uh, I'm just going to put a drop. You can see it. I'm going to move my fat hand. I'm going to put a drop on the palette. I may need one, one drop, so. Um, which I might need that as well. So I'm going to pick up a bit of black. And I'm just going to put it beside the um, Agrax Earth Shade, and it's probably one drop to, if you could say, by the time maybe a quarter of a drop, maybe a fifth even. Like I don't want it to be black, and I don't want it to be like dark, dark brown. I sort of want it just a little bit darker than what it would be, like standard Agrax Earth Shade. And if I can, and if I want to make it darker, I can. You can always add more black, but it's just really hard to take it out because it's such a strong colour. Um, so, 
I'm just gonna put a, put a bit in here like this, like this. You know, it's gonna sit in there. That's probably a little bit too much, okay? So I'm gonna take some out. Use the um, paper towel to suck some of it out. And then uh, get some water. And it's probably taking it out just a little bit too much. Okay, so I'm just going to do it in the corner in those holes. And that's probably that's probably what I wanted. So just a little bit wash it, and the camera doesn't pick up too. Like it's it's not. Um, it probably looks a bit white in the middle there, but it's only really the washing is only really subtle. Um, I don't want to. Um, <laughs> oh, Paul, you're a smart ass. <laughs> um, yeah, so. Yeah, no, now you put me off, Paul. Thanks, mate. <laughs> I was just, Paul, just commenting. Um, and yeah, so I want that really subtle. Now, I'm going to let that dry, and I'm also going to decide. Um, I'll probably end up taking some photos of this as well, and I'll. Upload these. You'll probably see all these photos on the Outback Mini Models um, Facebook page. So if you actually want to have a look um, at um, the, well, I guess the, the good images of this thing, um, they probably won't be up till tomorrow. So um, what time is it now? To so give it probably about another um, eight or nine hours. And they should be up on Outback Mini Models. So yeah, just type in Outback Mini Models on Facebook. Um, and if you're not sure, um, I think there's a link um, on my YouTube channel. I think I'm not too sure. I can't remember. But yeah, we'll let that dry. So, Mister. Um, now these I'm going to get painting. And time is flying by tonight. So. This hasn't been shaken up for a while, but hopefully there's a little sinker in here once it loosens up, because pretty much all the top was medium, so there you go, she's loosened up. Um, and what's, okay, that's probably the best. I think it's my the lighting, it's my complete white out now. Um, no. Alright, so that's as best it's going to get, guys. So, what I might have to start doing is going back to the old fashioned way is recording with the other camera and wasting, what, half a day uploading it onto my computer. Or editing it, and then put another day because I've got like really slow internet connection. Um, so put another day to upload it. So I might start doing that way. So probably the next, um, not the next video, but the next actual build that I do. Um, that way I guess I can upload it while I'm at work or when I go to bed. So by the time I get home, they should be uploaded. All right, so I'm going to keep shaking this because this hasn't been shaken for a while. And I don't want to squeeze the medium out of the top and just leave the pigments in the bottom because that's what happens sometimes if you don't. Um, just if you don't, don't shake it up properly. So. So, there we go. And I just need a couple of drops here because it's only tiny, tiny parts. Um, I'm going to go back to this paintbrush again. Uh, 
you got to remember too, game colour is quite thick, so you may need to thin it out a little bit if you don't want it. To, um, but normally the water that you got on the paintbrush, like I normally don't dry on the paintbrush completely when I with off the water before I put it back in the um, tray, so I'm back in the paint should stay. Yeah. I'm not going to spend too much time trying to show you because um, the resolution on it, well, it's just like that, it's just really bad. Just good because I don't think it's the way to record videos. Um, but it's just. First series of videos, I'll end up doing this way, so I like, guess if you don't do it, you don't learn, do you? So, learn something new every day. It's a spin over. Okay. I'm just going to finish this off here. That's one. No, I double checked that down all because I don't know. Have to do a second coat and fill up the detail. I was doing one thin coat, and I think there should be enough because I want to highlight it as well with the lighter colour. Do I brush something on there? Uh, that's one. I'll just quickly do the other one. Just get a bit more water in there. Turn it off. Stir it. Making sure we're just keeping a nice point on the brush. Um, Just going to quickly um, yeah so I think once I've done this I'm going to let this dry and I'll probably hit um, once I've dry brushed I think I'm using I'm not too sure what I'm going to use yet so I haven't really gone through the colours um, So I'm a bit of a random painter. I don't really have a set way of doing things. Okay, so that's done. I'll let that dry. It's going to take a few minutes for that to dry. Um, now I'm doing. Okay, so I'll paint up doing the blue. So I'm going to do it take off the excess of this brush. I don't want all this crap going in my water. I take off as much as metallic paint as I can and keep my water fairly clean. So, I'm not going to dry brush it too much. So, Um, 
Yeah, so Marcus, if you are watching this, um, this one here, I'm, I'm just recording these on the Google Plus. I'm not actually doing a hangout, buddy. I'll definitely catch up with you in, in the um, in a couple of hours' time on the um, on the actual two-hour build. But I'm just trying to get this build done. I'm trying to make a build video for these uh, for the subscribers out there. So. Trying to do, yeah, just trying to record as much of this build as I can easily. Um, so now I'm going to dry brush this. So I'm going to pick up a, I'm going to find a brush that's suitable. Um, okay, where are we going here? Um, yeah, everybody wants to join. <laughs> Okay. So I'm just, gonna, just clean up this brush. I'm get a lot of blue. Um, and I'm just gonna find which one it is. I think it's this one here. So it's flat azure blue from Tallery. So I'm just gonna do a couple of drops. Um, and all I'm going to do, I'm going to get just a bit of paper towel. Um, Alright, so I'm just going to get a paper, a paper towel. I'm just going to scrub off the paper under here. And what I'm going to do. Is I'm just going to use the side of the brush, I'm not using the, the, the tip or anything. I'm using the side of the brush, the edge of the brush, I'm just doing the edge, edges of these um, water surfaces. So, it's only so, I'm not trying to make it really strong and it stands out. So. This blue is only just slightly lighter than I think it. It was the um, was the Reaper. Um, not too sure what I used. Tell me what I used. Uh, nope, not that one. No, not that one. Uh, winter blue I used on the SU. Yeah, she 34. So that's the that's the medium color. Um, I used the flat blue um, from Tamiya, and I used the custom. I've got a custom. Um, had heaps of paint left over. Um, I had a massive. I think it was a 20 mil pot back in the day where I could get them with the Tamiya acrylic paints. And I had two of them, so I ended up making like a custom blue shade. And it worked out quite well, so I ended up using that becoming one of my colours for the SU thirty four. So it's really it's gonna be really hard to show you I'm actually highlighting because yeah, this the highlight is that so long so I don't want it um, because I haven't edge highlighted the rest of the aircraft. Um, I don't want the, um, I guess the the detail here to stand. I just pop it. I want to pop. I sort of want it to blend in with the rest of it because I haven't put any of the camo the camouflage scheme on these parts here. So I sort of just want to give it several um, different tones of color, and then I'll just give it just a light wash later on. So we're doing the edges here. Alright, so I'll be trying to cut this off now. Uh, get the old dirty Citadel clippers out. I'll leave one on the part of the just so I know which part it is. I'm 
can do here just and if you want um, you can do so I'm just gonna in a second I'm gonna work out which way is up in this thing because that's pretty important. If I paint the wrong side of it it's gonna look funny. It's gonna you know, the lighting effects not gonna look right so Just rub them out with the finger. And what I'm going to do, I do have a mistake here. I'm just going to quickly get to it before it dries. So just clean off the brush, take it off as much paint as I can. And I'm trying to use a damp brush. I just scrub. This stuff dries pretty quick. So. Scrub it off. So now I'm probably going to have to activate the paint again. Uh, that's what I was talking about before. Um, da, 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 da. Instructions, where are you? Crap, there's. So, uh, I'm going to start out with so the bottom, the bit with the lip is the bottom. So it's going to sit like that. So basically, this is going to be this is where the light's going to be on this side here. Just using the edge of the brush, just lightly. Very light pressure. Just applying. So just there. So there is not much paint on this brush at all. because it is under the wing it's not going to get much light at all if anything it's going to be quite dark but um, just for artistic licensing I'm just going to get a bit of highlight just so it pops a little bit just do the raised details um, I'm, not, I'm not getting too carried away with it I don't want a really hard a hard edge line on there so it's just going to be subtle Okay, done. I'll just go to the other one a little bit more. And I'll try and bring it close to the camera and see if it even has half a chance of um, picking it up. Right, so, so, you can imagine that's if it's sitting on the plane, it's going to be sitting that way, and the aircraft's going to be up here on top. So, you know, it's been upside down, you can see it. But there is um, even in the darkness there you can see you can probably just pick out the, the blue. There's your blue on there. As soon as I take it away into the light and it just yeah, it just gets killed with the light, you can't really see it, so So that's that. That's pretty much that one done. I'm just gonna quickly fly through the rest of them. There's that one. Gonna do these. Um, and this one, hopefully the wash is dry. I'll leave this one till last because that's the one that's got you know last with the um Agrax O'Shea and the Black Citadel wash mixed in together. So I'm just gonna quickly highlight all these. Yeah, it's actually good practice. I've actually been sort of getting back into brush painting as well um, on the models just yeah, because this two hour build tonight it's entirely brush painting. There is no um, air assisted tools um, to, to paint this, to paint your model. 
And actually, I feel sorry for Stefan because what he's building is um, it's one of the Russian uh, modern fighters, and the majority of it, I think it's, um, I guess, it's kind of like a dark grey, a slate grey colour. And he's got a, um, you know, it's a pretty big bird too. Like if you know what the Russian aircraft like, they do make big, big, air, big airplanes, especially their one stuff. Um, he was telling me early on today that this thing's probably about 30, um, 30 centimeters long. So he's got like a plane that's that big, you know, and he's got a hand painted. Um, yeah, that's gonna suck. <laughs> Get a Q tip just sort of rubbing back some of this paint. Just trying to take off the mess that I made. And we're done. So Sebastian's finally become active. He's been pretty quiet on Facebook. Must be early or something. No, it was now. Be, must be afternoon, late afternoon over there. Um, so. so now, just going to give us a quick clean up. So let's do it. So that's all done. Now I'm just going to do this one here. Now I'm just going to try and work out what I'm actually going to do. Um, once this is on. Yeah, good. I'm pretty sure you don't want to see me prime all these little parts, so I might do all of them off camera. So, um, I guess once I've done this, I'll probably um, go offline. I'll keep um, doing this, and I probably won't turn the camera back on until I'll well, probably the next video. I'll sort of get everything ready for just for assembly uh, because I think everything that I'm doing now is going to be quite boring. Um, so I'll just finish highlighting this. I'll, yeah, I'll end the, I'll end this live build. Um, if, I had a, if, I, if I had a decent camera, like it was showing a really nice high quality, I'd, I'd keep going. But um, I mean, I could imagine if I was a viewer trying to watch this, you know, I'd be getting pretty jacked off with it. So I'd be, I do apologise um, to whoever's watching out there. So I'll end up, um, yeah, just continue doing the rest of it. Um, I've also got to airbrush the um, canopy, canopy window here. Whoops. So I'll do all that off camera. And I guess then next time my, um, like I said before, once I turn, when I do turn the camera back on, all the parts are going to be ready. And it's just going to be a simple matter of um, gluing it all together. The seven aircraft, and then firstly, uh, yeah, it'll be done. So, the next video is just going to be just finishing it off. So, that's pretty much it, guys. Let me give some of the heavy brush here. 
Alright. So yeah, I'm gonna gonna kill the camera. Um so yeah, basically thanks for all your, your comments that you guys have left. Um yeah, it's been some really good positive um, comments, positive feedback. Um yeah, so thanks for watching um, and I'll catch up with you on the next one. Probably be tomorrow I'd say, so just keep your eyes out. Catch you later, eh? Bye.